and welcome to another episode of the Millionaire Mentor Method Podcast with me, your host, Crystal Kali, also known as the most famous woman in the world. So today I want to talk about the difference between being rich and being wealthy. And most people, most of us don't even think about the difference between being rich and being wealthy. And a lot of us don't think about where we're heading in our lives and what types of things we are prioritizing spending money on. So my favorite thing to do when it comes to pretty much anything is getting a number. So any issue or problem that you have in your life or business, it is so much easier to have clarity in terms of a number. And when it comes to wealth, my favorite definition of wealth was coined by a man named R. Buckminster Fuller, who, if you guys have never heard of that name before, he was an American sort of jack of all trades. So he was an architect, a humanitarian, a philosopher. He was an inventor. He was also uh, in academia for a very long time. So he was a writer. He also uh, was the world president of Mensa, for a few years. And if you guys know, don't know what Mensa is, it's basically a society for people with really high IQs and they do genius people things at Mensa. So he was a very, very interesting guy. And I encourage you guys to look up his story because it's uh, quite interesting, interesting, and very unique. Um, but he said that he defined wealth as a person's ability to survive X number of days forward. And so what does this mean? This means that wealth is not black or white. It's calculated in terms of a number and in, in specifically in time. How much time can you survive as a human with the amount of assets that you have saved or you have uh, built up, right? So, and also an, another great definition of what is wealth and what is just being rich is actually in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book. I'm sure you guys have all heard about it by Robert Kiyosaki. So in that book, he says that his rich dad said, rich is measured in money, but wealth is measured in time. And most people focus on getting rich rather than becoming wealthy. And so I would have to fully agree with this because in America, we're not, most of us, aren't taught that our goal financially is to become wealthy. And we don't really even know what that means. And it's not something that we're taught in school. It's not something that a lot of families are very familiar with. And a lot of families even think that becoming wealthy is a pie in the sky dream when really it's not. And um, it's it's actually the goal of of many people in different kind of niche communities that that culturally know more about becoming wealthy. So how do you get your, so first of all, we need to talk about getting your wealth number and your wealth number is pretty simple. It just means, it just is how much cash or cash equivalents do you have divided by your monthly expenses. So that means the first number you need to think about is how much cash, how much stocks, how much CDs, uh, if you have any stocks that give you dividends or if you have any um, uh, other, other liquid assets. So we're not talking necessarily about um, like, let's say it's this number is not going to be, oh, well, if I sold my second car, then that would give me $10,000. If I sold my, all my whole guitar collection, that would give me another $5,000. If I did this, if I stopped eating out, if it's not that, just think of your actual real expenses that you have every single month and cash or cash equivalents that you have. So let's say that you added up all of your assets everything that you have. And this isn't, uh, this wouldn't include, like if you own a house, you wouldn't include your actual house because you have to live somewhere. So we're not talking about selling your primary residence and putting that in, in the number. That's not at all what it is. 
So let's say that you added up all of your savings and all of everything that you could sell within 24 hours for cash, you add it all up and that number comes out to $20,000. Okay, so that's $20,000 that you have. And then let's add up all of your expenses. So that's going to be every bill that you have. So that is utilities, food, gas, car payments, mortgage, rent, all of it, credit card payments, all of the above, all of that. So let's say that you have, and let's just make this really simple. So you have 20,000 and let's say that your monthly expenses that you have are 4,000 every single month. So 20,000 divided by 4,000 is five. So that means you would be able to survive only five months with your current situation. And just to throw it out there, uh, most Americans would not be able to survive past the next paycheck or the next couple of paychecks. So most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Most Americans right now do not have any savings at all. And Americans are in a dire situation. So instead of running away from all this stuff, the sooner that you learn it is the sooner you can get out of this situation if you're in it. So this can be a very, a very slap in the face thing to realize, which is maybe how far away you feel that you are from becoming wealthy. But it's also a sobering experience and it's great because it can get you back on track and just realign your priorities. So the very first thing we want to think about when, okay, maybe we're realizing I'm not rich, I'm not uh, wealthy, right? Maybe you're rich, uh, maybe you feel rich and that's great. Um, but the first thing we want to talk about is buying cash flowing assets because that's the key to wealth. And there's only a few things that are truly cash flowing assets because these are things that are going to be passive income. So that would include rental properties. So that means apartments, condos, townhouses, duplexes, or houses that you bought in order to rent it out to someone else. And that does not include your primary residence. That includes only properties that are specifically meant to be a rental property. So that is an asset that you bought, which will give you money in your pocket every single month for as long as that house stands. Okay, other cash flowing assets could be stocks that give you dividends. And that just means that that stock is not just a stock that just sits there and the only way you're going to get money out of it is if you sell it. Stocks that provide dividends, and you can look up different ones that actually do this, but that means that you are actually sharing in the profits of the company in a very real way because those, stock, those stocks give you money in your bank account as long as you hold them. And some places to go invest in stocks and ETFs that pay dividends are websites such as Webull, E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Schwab, um, pretty much any of those. You can just go ahead and Google how to buy stocks that pay dividends, where to buy stocks that pay dividends, and which company is the best. Well, you can just do an online comparison. Some of them have higher fees, some of them have lower fees, for trading, just depending on the services that they provide and also things like visibility of the company. You know, some people like a certain brand, they like a certain name or company because of their public track record and things like that. And you can also go to websites such as stockrover.com. That's S-T-O-C-K-R-O-V-E-R. -E I'm not sponsored for any of this stuff. I'm just showing you guys some sites that I go to. Um, Stock Rover gives you comprehensive information on about 8,000, about 8,500 uh, U.S. stocks, and that is with their free plan. And they have other plans as well that you can look up even more detailed information, but you can look up companies' dividend history. So you can actually see how much money they're paying out to their shareholders year over year. 
There's another one that you can go to, which is, I love this website called vitaldollar.com and you can search in their blogs for different exchange traded funds, ETFs that pay out dividends. They have some really great blogs on there, but you can also look up something called the dividend aristocrats list and you can just go ahead and Google that. So what that is, is the top 65 companies that qualify for consecutive years of dividend growth year over year. So these also have to be on the S&P 500 index. So that means these are very large multinational conglomerates with a lot of them having decades upon decades of history. So for example, the top one of the top companies there on 2022's dividend aristocrats list is a company called Dover. It's in the industrials sector and that is D-O-V, D as in dog, O-V as in Victor. And they've had 66 years of consecutive dividend growth. Other companies that are on that list are ones you will definitely recognize, such as Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, 3M, Procter & Gamble, uh, Black & Decker, Cisco, Target, Pepsi, Lowe's, all of those. So if you want to go and find a, find find those, please do, because why just buy and hold when you can buy, hold, and also get paid? Another great cash flowing asset is something called a REIT. If you've never heard of that, that is R-E-I-T. That is a real estate investment trust. And what this is, is a way to invest in real estate without having to actually go out and get your boots on the ground and go out there and actually buy properties and finance them and rent them out and all that stuff. These are large, usually quite large companies that do all of that for you and they put it in a real estate investment trust. You invest in that, you invest in that and you make profit when they make profit. Another cash flowing asset that many people might not think about is investing in farmland. So when you think about rental property, usually we're thinking about apartments and houses, things like that, but you also can definitely invest in farmland and you would be renting out that farmland to farmers. And you can look up some ways to do that on couple websites. Again, I'm not sponsored, but there is acretrader.com and farmtogether.com. Other cash flowing assets include bonds. So bonds are usually low risk, but also lower rewards. So what that means is a short-term bond is a bond that you purchase and it matures in one to three years. Uh, A medium-term bond is a bond that matures in 10 or more. And then there's long-term bonds that can have something like a 30-year maturity date. So that would be a 30-year treasury bond. And typically, the APR that you will receive, so the amount of money that you'll be making from buying them, from purchasing them, is somewhere around in in the lower single digits. So for example, right now, the bond rate is 6.7%. So let's say you had a five-year bond and you invested $100. Well, at the end, you would get $106.70, right? So not super great investments, but that is another example of a cash flowing asset. Another example of a cash flowing asset that I want you guys to start on as soon as humanly possible is creating evergreen content that can potentially earn you money over the rest of your life. So these are things like books, ebooks, online courses, online digital products, things that you can make once and they can sell for the rest of your life. Another way to invest in real estate without actually going out and having to buy properties on your own is investing in something called real estate crowdfunding. So a couple of websites that you can use for that is Fundrise. Another one is Arrived. And these are ways that you can invest with as little as $10 and you can invest in 
individual properties. And when you go on there, you're going to get it, you're going to get a lot of information about single properties. So it is a little bit different than a REIT, but that is another way that you can invest in cash flowing properties without having to be a boots on the ground owner operator. And if you are an artist, musician, or photographer, I highly encourage you to start creating evergreen content that you enjoy to create anyways, and to allow those to become cash flowing evergreen assets for you by putting your work up on things that can earn you royalties. So for example, if you are a photographer, you can actually go out and take stock footage and upload your footage to websites such as Shutterstock, and you can earn royalties on your work. If you are a musician, there's all kinds of websites and more and more and more popping up every day where you can make money from your beats, you can make money from your instrumentals for other artists to use, you can also license out your music to film and television, and of course now we're all knee deep in NFTs for musicians, so even if nothing happens right away, I always say it's better to put up the put up your music, put up your photography or your artwork in places that people can discover it, in places that people can purchase it if they choose to. Because you never know what will happen. For example, I have a Buddhist chanting song that I have been that that's been up on um every music website for a while and Every once in a while, I get a payment of about anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks every so often. And, you know, um, I'm not doing anything for that 20 or 30 bucks anymore. And yes, of course, it's only 20 or 30 bucks, but that's just one song. Imagine if you had 500 songs. What if you had 1,000 songs? What if you made one song every single day like Beeple. That would be 365 day. That would be 365 songs at the end of the year. In three years, you would have well over a thousand songs. And I'm not saying that that's actually doable, but hey, maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, Beeple created a piece of artwork every single day for like 10 years or something. So I think if you want to put your mind to it, you can definitely do it. Um, but there are different websites now popping up all over where you can do this at. One of them is called Royalty Exchange. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that one. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. But there's other ways that you can create cash flowing assets. There's so many new ways popping up. Of course, I didn't touch too heavily upon crypto right now because we're all in the crypto winter right now. And trust me, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I got hit pretty hard with the whole crypto situation, but it's all good because it's a learning experience. We're all learning and this is the wild west. And there's a part of me that loves the idea of uncharted territory. And I'm someone that's willing to get in the water, even if they're sharks. And I'm willing to get in before other people because sometimes that's where the best opportunities are. So, hey, you know what? We're rocking and rolling, people. I really hope you found this helpful. And please remember to think of ways to become wealthy and not just rich. And each one, teach one. The information provided in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as financial advice, investment advice, or medical advice. The host is not a financial advisor nor a medical doctor or licensed therapist. Any financial or medical decisions made based on the information in this podcast are made at the listener's own risk. It is recommended that listeners consult with licensed professionals such as CPAs, financial advisors, and licensed physicians before making any investment or medical decisions. The host and creators of this podcast accept no responsibility or liability for any loss or damages incurred as a result of the information provided in this podcast.